Coming up this week on the GCN Racing News Show, skills, spills, abandons, and a breakaway extravaganza at the Vuelta España. A wet and windy finale to the Tour of Britain, a future star shines at the Lotto Belgium Tour, and it's double bling at the Grand Prix of Quebec and Montreal. We start today at La Vuelta, which has just reached the conclusion of the second week. A number of riders have now abandoned. Dillavant Baal succumbed to injuries sustained in a bizarre post-finish crash on stage 12. A race official timed his sprint past the photographers all wrong, and with an incredibly tight and narrow finish, there was nowhere for stage winner Alexandre Geniez to go. The two collided heavily, but it was then Van Baal who would end up the worse off. Kema Rodriguez, who has had huge involvement in cycling for decades, unfortunately felt like he needed to resign from his position with immediate effect. Now, while there is no doubt that he was ultimately at fault here, you also have to question whether that was actually a finish fit for the end of a Grand Tour stage. Anyway, Marcus Burkhart was amongst the riders who voiced their disapproval, and you can see why. Downhill, and extremely narrow, there was very little room for the riders to get past the scrum of photographers on the line, even without the extra obstruction. Had it been a bigger group sprinting from the line, the consequences could have been even worse. Amongst the others leaving the race last week were Pavel Sivakov, suffering after his own crash at the end of the first week, Nasser Buani, who wasn't able to finish stage 11, and also Dan Martin, who headed home for the imminent arrival of twins. So best of luck to him and his partner. Amazingly, still in the race is Louis Mankies. The South African crashed on a descent on stage 14, falling some way off the side of the road, and he looked dazed to say the very least as he got back on his bike. He was closely monitored by medical staff that evening and was deemed fit enough to start the following day. Now, in terms of the actual racing, the leader's jersey was briefly loaned to Jesus Harada of the Cofidis team after he formed part of yet another breakaway that took a serious chunk of time on stage 12, but Simon Yates would take it back two days later. The GC battle itself is still very open. Quintana was the dominant force on stage 13, but Yates turned the table the following two stages, winning stage 14 and then placing third on La Covadonga the following day. Now, this is the way things stand going into the final rest day. Simon Yates leading by 26 seconds over Alejandro Valverde. Quintana is a further seven seconds back in third. Lots still to play for in the final week then, which starts tomorrow with a 32 kilometer individual time trial. And I will let you in here on my prediction. Rowan Dennis for the win. Really going out on a limb there. Uh, now don't forget as well that you can catch daily highlights and analysis over on our Facebook page. But if you would like to watch live, then we've actually got a cheeky little special offer for you. For those countries where Eurosport is available, you can now sign up to the Eurosport player through the GCN shop. And when you do, you'll get five pounds or five euro voucher to spend in the GCN shop. All the details are over there. There is a link in the description below if you want to get straight through there, or you'll be able to click on one at the end of this show on the video. How good is that? Uh, right, now before we finish with the Vuelta though, we have to show you this footage of Ivan Garcia Cortina, the savagely steep slopes of La Camporona, clearly not getting in the way of his enjoyment. Meanwhile, over in Canada, the ninth editions of the Grand Prix of Quebec and Montreal were run on Friday and Sunday, respectively. A brave effort by Pete Kenyak in the former almost saw him pull off an upset. However, he was caught almost within sight of the line, and so we had the expected reduced bunch sprint. Winning convincingly was Michael Matthews, clearly fitter and fresher than the rest after an injury hit season, and that much was evident two days later in Montreal. His team worked hard, he finished off the job, this time in a much closer battle with Sonny Colbrelli. Matthews, slightly controversially perhaps, hasn't been selected by Cycling Australia for the World Championships, and here is what he had to say on that subject yesterday. Yeah, I don't really know the decision there. Um, I think I've showed I'm in really good shape and I really want to help my really good friend Richie Port to, to win the world. And um, yeah, maybe after this race something will change, but uh, till now, yeah, I'm sitting out watching it from the sidelines. 
Second in Quebec for the fourth time was Greg Van Avermaet, the Olympic champion, backing it up with third in Montreal. Now it's going to be interesting to see what he is capable of at the World Championships in Austria. Too hard, perhaps? We'll find out. The Tour of Britain reached its conclusion yesterday in London. The race had been shaped by the particularly tough team time trial, which finished up the win latter pass. Lotto and El Yumbo won that stage and put Primoz Roglic into the race lead, but surprisingly perhaps he faltered the following day on a stage which finished on the very same climb. There, Julian Alaphilippe did enough in finishing second to Wout to propel himself into the leader's jersey, which he would keep through Sherwood on stage seven and on to the final in London. Now, incredibly, that marked Quickstep's 61st win of the season so far. And the final stage in London was won by Caleb Ewan, riding his final race for Mitchelton Scott. He outsprinted Gaviria and Andre Greipel to the line. 20-year-old Leanne Lippert has cemented herself as a future star of women's cycling. She had already won the national elite title in Germany back in June and has now added the three-day Lotto Belgium tour. She finished sixth in the opening prologue behind Aud Bianic, but it was Lippert who would prove strongest in the final stage around Heradsbergen on a circuit that included the infamous Muir. Now, we normally leave the off-road stuff to our mates over at GMBN, with the exception of Cyclocross, actually, which we love. But we are going to dip our toes in the mud briefly because this week's Rider of the Week is Kate Courtney. In her first World Championships out of the under-23 category, the 22-year-old got the better of two far more experienced riders, Annika Langvad and Emily Batty, to become the first American winner of the event since Alison Dunlap back in 2001. Now, of course, head over to GMBN later today for the full rundown of the whole World Championships in Switzerland, where Nino Scherter also took an amazing seventh world title in front of a huge home crowd. Right then, next week we will be back with the conclusion of the Vuelta as well as the Madrid Challenge, the first of the late season Italian one day races, the Coppa Bernocchi and the Coppa Agostini, as well as the Championship of Flanders. Remember that if you want to head over to the GCN shop and get that cheeky little discount on the Eurosport player, the link is on screen now. And if you would like to watch another video, something that could well be useful for many team mechanics, can you repair carbon fiber? That one is also on screen now.